So welcome back to another episode. In this episode, we're going to be getting to uh, assembling some of this engine. Probably one of the most important parts about getting this crankshaft right is the bearing oil clearances. To get the exact bearing clearances to allow the oil to properly lubricate these mains and these rod bearings. So now it's time to start putting this engine together. So first off, we've got to spec up the bearing clearances. So we're going to start on the mains first and then we'll work our way onto the rod bearings. Um, you can see the block has been fully cleaned up now. All the block girdle, everything's spotless. So you can uh, eat your dinner off that now. So I've went into the oil ways. You can see the oil squirt holes which are there. And I've blasted everything through with air. I've also went through where the oil pump goes, blasted everything out so there's no debris at all in the block. It's one of the most important parts. If you start up a fresh build that's got bearing debris still into the oil holes and everything, it's going to pump it straight into the bearing. So make sure your block is absolutely spotless before you even attempt to rebuild. Before I start specking up the crankshaft and the bearing clearances, you can see I've got to clean up all this stuff with brake cleaner. I just want to run you through a quick way of how to measure these bearings whether it, I'm going to start with the rods because obviously the rods are easier than actually uh, measuring the main cap bearings and I can show you a lot easier so you need a bore dial gauge and you need yourself a micrometer so in order to measure the uh, diameter of these rods you need to torque them up so you need to put your bolts in torque these up to the uh, ARP manufacturer's specifications with the bearings inside um, that way you're going to get the proper measurements you can also do it without the bearings inside then measure the bearing thicknesses. I mean, it just gets more and more accurate. But for this simple explanation, we're gonna do it with the uh, bearings inside. So you torque down your bolts, but also what you've got to do when you're torquing these bolts down, you need to measure them with a dial gauge before you fit them, and then measure stretch once you've torqued them up. So you can measure the inside this hole here in the top of the rod. You can put your dial gauge in there and put it on the head of the bolt and you can measure how much it's stretched. Then look at the ARP manufacturer's specification of how much a bolt can stretch. If it's in, within tolerances, then you can go ahead and then measure the diameter of your bearing journal. So your micrometer needs to go down to about 0 0.001 increments. And I just want to quickly show you where you've got to measure from and how you've got to measure. So I quickly draw out the uh, inside of that rod. When you're measuring inside of the rod, you always, always measure top to bottom. Never measure sideways. I'm going to quickly show you why, because the measurements will be different. So you've got massive loads going on inside these rods. And to compensate for that, they make these bearings eccentric. So you will see, if I show you from a top view, if I show you onto a bit of paper here, that these rod bearings will be slightly out of shape. So you can see they're not perfectly round. Middle where they join is slightly out. What happens is over the load of the rod is these bearings will deflect and they will push in. You can see I can push it with my fingers. You can imagine the amount of stresses that are going on inside an engine. If they make these bearings so they are perfectly round from the start, and then you get that load and these push it even more, what's gonna happen is on these joins, they're gonna pinch the bearing and they're gonna pinch into the journal and then you end up with a spun bearing. So you always measure this way when you're measuring inside of a rod or a main cap. So after you've actually done that, um, taking the measurements, the actual math is very simple. So it's obviously just using the right tools and using the right equipment, and it's very simple after that. So let's just say the inside of the rod was 1.794 inches, and then the journal of the crank was 1.774 inches. You worked out then, if you just subtract them, that the clearance for the oil was 0 0.020. Now that's not a bad clearance actually, you can run a nice oil grade with that. So the rule of thumb really is every inch of crank diameter is one thousandth of an inch clearance. But um, engines like this, I like to run a little bit more than that. There is another way to do it. I've actually got some, I'll pull it out for you. Wow, so that makes it easier for me to explain to you. They actually give instructions now. They never used to do that at all. You can see here, you've got these strips of plastic. Now these are obviously extruded to exactly the same um, diameter. And you can see what you do is, you cut your length of your strip, this is the strip here, and you put it onto the journal bearing of the main cap or the rod bolt. And then you put your cap on the top and you torque it down to the vehicle manufacturer's specs with the bearings inside. Bearings dry, no oil, don't move the crank at all when you've torqued it up, otherwise it'll smudge it. Then once you've took the cap back off, you can clearly see here, you have this um, gauge, which is that, 
and it measures the width of the squashed down plastic age. So then that means you've got two thousandths of an inch oil clearance. Now that is like, as you know, microscopic. So obviously if you're gonna use thick oil, you're gonna need a wider clearance, you're gonna use thin oil, you're gonna need tighter clearance, but you know, tighter clearance is no good for high horsepower because things expand. So it's a very, very uh, difficult mix and match. What I will do is when I'm building one of the uh, journals up uh, on the rods, I will use plastic gauge and show you the measurements I've got compared to what the measurements plastic gauge got. They'd be really very close, but they won't be perfect. As you can see, like we're looking at half a fair between each increment and that can make a massive difference. So you can see inches in thousandths. So I'm gonna to get to taking off this material that's protecting all the crank and that so we can start getting measurements done, start getting bearing clearances done. And we can start putting this to get together so we can get the crank in. So all I'm gonna use for this is just simple brake cleaner, wipe it down with a microfiber so we don't scratch up any of the journals and you'll see there come up like a mirror polish finish. And there you go, so that's one fully cleaned up crankshaft now. You can see how polished up the journal bearings are. It's a little bit damp out today, so there's a bit of condensation building up on it. So then it's highly polished as they should be. But um, now we can uh, get to installing this into the block and do a mock-up fitting and uh, make sure everything's fitting nicely. So I'm gonna put the main studs back into the uh, block. You can put these in with Loctite in the ARP guidelines you can actually do that but I'm not going to that's for a permanent fit so you can do that but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use the ARP fastener stuff I've got some tubs of that some tubes of that and then for the bearings for lubricating the bearings up just going to use some of this assembly lube you can use really thick engine oil as well I just like to use uh, assembly lube because it stays onto the bearings especially if you're not starting out for a long period of time so I've just fully cleaned up all the main studs ready for assembly. And another thing I have done is I've measured all these studs for stretch. So I've measured that they're all perfectly still in spec for ARP specs because obviously we're reusing these studs. So I thought I'd quickly do something for you guys um, as regards to the plastic gauge that I was talking about earlier. So I've measured all the um, clearances that I want to run on the mains anyway, um, but I thought I'd stick the plastic gauge in just to see how close it was to the actual specs that I've measured out with the micrometer and the bore dial gauge and everything. You can see this is the plastic gauge, basically it gets squashed between the bearings and you can see how nicely they are matching. You know, you've got almost identical you're not going to get it down to the uh, absolute tenth of a fair but you can see they're very close and they actually come out one thousandth larger than um, what I'd actually measured it out with the dial bore gauge and the uh, micrometer and so if you're just going to slap together an engine at least use plastic gauge it is actually what the Mitsubishi manual tells you to use um, to measure the crank is in spec but obviously I like to do it a little bit more OCD so here's a quick example here of how easy it is to do plastic gauge uh, method. Uh, as I say, this is the Mitsubishi uh, method itself in the manual, but it's not the way that a proper engine builder would do it. You can see you just put a little uh, slot of plastic gauge that you've cut out to your um, actual specs. You've got to match the plastic gauge up to the size of the bearings that you're going to be measuring because there's all different thicknesses. You can see there, and then all you do is you just torque up your main caps so you can see in the block here that I've cleaned out all the oil squirter holes absolutely spotless in there now. You can see something else I wanted to show you. You can see at the bottom of these cylinders, they've been machined out and this is for um, allowance of clearance for the rods. Because we're using a 100 millimeter crank, the rods will obviously be at a more of an angle um, because of the stroke. 
and if you didn't do this clearance pockets then obviously the rod's going to touch the uh, bore touch the block and then you're going to have a failure so they've been machined out you can see here just for allow that clearance and also a little bit needed to be taken out the block as well you need to go over that with a feeler gauge if you're doing this sort of work you know what you're doing anyway so there you go you can see that the oil squirt is all in there and all talked up to spec an interesting fact was that um, when I took these oil squirters out, there was no crush washer on the block side of the oil squirter, only on the bolt side. So I just replaced them and put nice fresh uh, crush washers in there. Um, if you have like a leak coming out of these with no crush washers, you're just letting oil pressure out from the oil pump that should be going out the oil squirters. They've got a check valve in these and uh, basically at low oil pressure, it won't allow oil out the squirters just so it can keep oil going into the crank into the main bearings and uh, the problem is if you've got a leak coming out of here with no crush washers you're obviously losing oil pressure so that's a big no-no so always replace the crush washers so all the measurements are now done for the mains um, just left to put these thrush washers into the block now it's really important that you get these the right way around you can see in these thrush washers there's a groove these are for oil that's for oil circulation you can see right there and basically what that does is that oils up the crank so they have to go on the outside you can see they go that way round if you put them that way round then they're just going to get stuck and seize up and the crank's going to seize so you can see up against the crank there there's like a polished surface that's where the oil sits up against and then you've got the coated copper side and then that side is sitting against the block this is like an old style design. I don't really know why they still do it. Um, I prefer to have the thrust washer that's inside the bearing, just like the Zlets have when they're actually made into the uh, middle bearing. But basically, this is just like a, a spacer that stops the crank moving side to side and getting crank walk.
When you're going to be running an engine with really high boost pressures, it's crucial to have a good gasket sealing. So obviously a head gasket is going to sit between here and the head. Now you can see about 2000 miles ago this block was decked, so it's perfectly flat. It's been decked on a machine, so it doesn't need to be done again. All I've done is I've cleaned up the surfaces. The head has also been skimmed as well, so that's perfectly flat. So the multi-layer steel head gasket is going to sit on there. Be able to clamp it down with H11 head studs and get a perfect sealing between the block and the head. That's a very, very important thing. In next episode, we're going to be installing the pistons and rods and getting the short block built up and then start onto the head so we can bolt the head on. Um, what I've just done now is I've just weighed out all the pistons, the rings, the gudgeon pins and the clips all together. You can see inside here, in this one, some of the material needed to be removed to make it the same weight as this one. So what you do is you measure it out on a digital gauge and you've got to make sure that the piston rod assembly is all balanced, all the same weight. So you can see inside there where the CP mark is. This one's been untouched because this one was good. And then this one had to have a little bit ground off it. Now, if you don't know what you're doing with these, um, don't do it yourself because obviously you've got to grind it from certain places that don't take any strength out of the pistons. But if you're new to it, take it down to a machine shop. Let them do it. Just tell them, obviously, you want them balanced. You want them weighed out and uh, made sure they're in specs. So join me in the next episode. Didn't want to make this one too long. That's why I'm going to separate it into a couple of episodes. We're going to get the rest of the engine back into a short block. Then we can start building the head up.